So I woke up with really floofy hair this morning, but then I walked outside in the rain, and now my hair is all flat and boring, so I'm just gonna have to live with that, I guess. So behind me, we have these big moving boxes, because I'm moving out tomorrow. Uh, they're such, such a great backdrop. Anyway, so today I'm gonna talk about the pieces that I made in my printmaking class. My very first project was relief printing, and I made this portrait of my friend Danny using a linoleum block. Unfortunately, I can't find the block that I used to carve this piece. Um, but I do have a couple of pictures of my process. Basically, I just looked at a photo that I took from my photo class last semester, and I carved it. And then I rolled over it with ink, and I printed it. So I was actually really anxious about this, because printmaking is... It's an art that's really precise, and if you mess up, then wow, you've ruined everything. I spent 15 hours carving this block and I can see every place where I messed up because there's no way to undo it. Once you carve something out, you can't put it back. I ended up finishing this the night before it was due and I had, oh boy, lots of panic and feeling like I was gonna pass out uh, in the studio, but it's fine. Our second project was etching, which is basically etching a drawing into a copper plate I don't know if you can see anything on here. I'm pretty sure I got a video of what it looked like when it was actually shiny and nice. This particular project was not an exercise in sameness. We were allowed to make prints that looked different from each other. So this was my first one I made. I used Shinkole to make this one, which uh, basically this little spot of yellow down here on the backpack is a piece of construction paper that is stuck to this with wheat paste and I put it through the, the press like that so the ink would print over top of it. This was also stressful because that's another really exact measurement that I didn't get quite right, but it's close enough. This one is also shinkole. Uh, it's a different color, but the shinkole is up here in the sky. I let the teacher keep one of my prints so I don't have all of them, but another one I did was a double drop print, and double drop is the most stressful one of all because <laughs> it's like a time limit. You do the plate with your first color, which in my case was kind of like like a yellow, um, and then you have to like clean it all off and ink it in black, and then re-ink over it in black, and it has to be exactly lined up, and you have to have it done within like five minutes. You actually get the paper wet to do this process, so if you take too long, the paper actually shrinks and it won't work. Although the printing of this project is pretty stressful, I'd say the most stressful part was actually like etching the design out of the copper. So the way that it works is that, oh man, how do I explain this? So I used this process called hard ground where I covered my copper plate in asphaltium. It's, based, it's like this black thick substance that I painted over it. So I used this etching needle, this little tip right here to carve the design out of the um, asphaltium. So it's not actually like carved into the copper, it's just making marks into that layer that I laid over the top of it. And then once I did that, I had to dip the copper plate into an acid bath and wear goggles and big gloves. It's not like it's flesh eating or anything, but if it gets on your skin, it will kind of like, eat at it a little bit, it will be kind of irritating, and that makes me really uncomfortable. Our next project was lithography, which I'm not super sure how to explain, but I'll do my best. So I made this computer drawing that we printed out on transparent paper. This is called a chemo desk, and there is this big machine. It kind of looks like a photocopier, but not really. So you take this image and you put it on a light sensitive plate and you put that into the, the machine. Oh, do I have my plate with me? That's a good question. So once it goes through that process that I'm not sure how to explain to you, you get a plate that looks like this. As you can see, this image got transferred onto here. You get this all wet with water and then you take ink and you roll ink over it and the ink sticks to all of the green parts because these parts are um, oil loving, I believe. And then when you print it, you get, this is the version that I added color to, but you get something like this, 
which I love this print. I called it Mother of Exiles. The prompt was to make something political, so I made it about refugees. So at this point, I wasn't anxious about the class anymore. Eventually, I became kind of comfortable with having to line things up super precisely and making sure all of the prints looked the same, and it just became kind of like second nature to me. So the final project, which we just finished recently, is monoprinting and monotyping. And this is actually a relatively recent form of printmaking. It's more like painting, but painting that like goes through the press. Let me explain. So I did another portrait series of Danny. I decided to do a process print, which basically uses cyan, yellow, magenta, and black to make an image because those four colors are used in computer printing processes to simulate the entire color range. So what I did is I took a photograph that I took of Danny, I put it in Photoshop, I divided it into four different layers, each representing a different uh, color, and then I printed those four layers out. And then I took a sheet of plexiglass and I put it over top of one, I started with yellow, and then I rolled yellow ink over it. And then once I did that, I used a q-tip to wipe away areas that I didn't want to print and I used a paintbrush to add more ink to areas that I did want to print and then I printed it and then I moved on to the magenta layer where I did the exact same thing but with the color magenta and I printed that directly on top of the yellow layer lined up as best as I could and then I took the blueprint and I put it under the plexiglass and did the same thing and I printed that and then finally I added some finishing touches with shadows on the black layer and so I ended up with two different prints from this process one of them is the actual uh, original image which is way too dark because I had way too much cyan, but it does it does have this cool vibe to it and the hat came out actually simulating all of the colors I was going for, which was pretty cool. And then the second print I got was a ghost print. What a ghost print is, is once you roll your print through one time, you still have some ink left on whatever you put through the press. So you push it through again. So the colors on this one are more accurate because they were all like more transparent and so they stacked better. And then the third uh, piece I made for this series was this one. And I did this by using the cyan and black ghost layers. I inked up a big piece of lace and then I printed the lace over Danny's face and then I just added a pattern to the sides. So we have an entire series of Danny's face. It was worth it, I think. I really learned a lot and it was enjoyable. And so I went a long way from working on a piece for 15 hours and crying about it the whole time to working on a piece for roughly the same amount of time and enjoying myself the whole time. So that was my year in printmaking for me. My stomach is rumbling, so I'm gonna go eat something and I will see you guys tomorrow.